Welcome to Easy Elim Learning Simplified. My name is Ruth and today we are going to be looking at the topic Organic Chemistry 2 and our subtopic for today is polymers. So we look at what polymers are and especially what are additional polymers and then we also look at some of those uses of those polymers. So polymer is a micromolecule formed when two or more molecules link together to form a larger unit. We mentioned on polymers when we were discussing alkenes, so we can go back and check what we discussed there. We did a few calculations as well. So polymers have different properties, different from those of monomers. So they're, they're, the process of polymer for formation is called polymerization. And there's these two types of polymers. We have the natural ones and the synthetic ones or artificial. So natural polymers usually occur naturally in living systems. And examples are like starch, we have cellulose, we have wool, we have protein, we have actually also natural rubber is also an example of a natural polymer. So example, natural rubber, uh, trees usually gives out latex, which is collected from tea trunks, and then natural rubber, rubber is made out of latex from uh, rubber trees. And now when the latex is an hydrocarbon, it's called hysoprene. It's important to remember this, um, uh, structure of natural rubber, it's a bit different from the synthetic one. The synthetic one has some chloride atoms introduced into the into the structure. So it's usually called 2 methyl one 3 diene and it's usually formed by when the polymer is formed by addition polymerization. So that is what happens, as you can see, when addition polymerization happens, the double bond is shifted to this carbon and it forms this polymer. So in case you see such kind of a structure, remember this is the natural polymer, natural. The synthetic one has the same kind of structure, but now with the chloride atoms attached or substituents. So advantages and disadvantages of natural polymers. So some of the advantages of natural polymers are they are non-biodegradable, so they do not cause any environmental pollution since they are natural in their nature. So they are made from renewable sources, so they are not easily exhausted because these sources are always being renewed by nature. So most are easily, easily flammable and good materials for uh, not easily flammable, so they are good for making clothes. Some of the disadvantages of these uh, natural polymers is one of them is that they are very expensive compared to the synthetic polymers, and then they do not last very long, and they are usually affected by acids and alkalis. So synthetic polymers, mainly we have examples like polythene, we have papex. Remember also the synthetic rubber falls in this uh, category and so many other as you notice, as you see, as we progress. So there are two main types, that is the thermoplastic and thermosetting polymers. So the thermoplastic are the ones that softens when heated and then becomes rigid. Examples are like nylon, polythene, polystyrene. But now for the thermoplastic, when you heat them again, when they have become rigid, they become soft again. So you can mold them into different uh, shapes. But for the thermosetting ones, these, they usually are soft. They are soft at the beginning of the reaction when they are being made, but the moment they set and they cool down to form Hard, uh, hard, rigid ones, so they cannot be softened again. They have already set. That's why they are called thermosetting. They have set into their solid form, and even if you heat them again, they do not soften. So let's look at some of the advantages of synthetic polymers. They are can be made into different shapes, especially the thermosoftening softening ones. They are cheaper, and then they are not affected by chemicals like alkalis, water, and air. They're usually less denser and yet stronger. 
Then some of the disadvantages, the most common is the fact that they are non-biodegradable, so they cause a lot of uh, pollution when they are disposed. And when they burn, uh, they produce some poisonous gases which can cause issues with the lungs. So let's now look at additional polymerization from what we have discussed. This occurs when unsaturated molecules or monomers join to form long chain molecule or polymer without the formation of any other products. They usually have at least a double board or a triple board in when you continue with chemistry, you notice that. So the double board or triple board opens up and the unbound electron from boards with the neighboring electron. So you can see, for example, uh, this is a ethene monomer. This is an ethene monomer. When they combine, you can see the double board has moved, removed, and then they combine to form polyethene or commonly known as polythene. So you, we discussed the same thing in alkenes. You can go back and see what we discussed. So these are examples of additional polymers. So we have ethene, which combines, and you can see the double board is removed to form polyethene. Uh, they're usually light and durable, and they're used to make polythene bags, uh, electrical insulation, plastic pipes. Those are some of their uses. We have polypropene. So polypropene is made from polypropene molecules, as you can see. So this have uh, a double board here. But remember, we cannot continue showing this continuously. You see where, how we have changed the longest chain, we have to put the CH3 down here. Otherwise, you'll be repeating uh, the same structure with a thin. So we make it different by placing the CH3 in this side. We explained this in details in our previous video when we were looking at uh, reactions of alkene, that is the addition reaction. So you can go back and check why we are placing the CH3 at this point or changing the longest chain, the direction. So they are used to making crates, boxes, and plastic rooms. We have chloroethene. So chloroethene forms polychloroethene, or commonly known as PVC or polyvinyl chloride. PVC is very common because of the fact that it's used to make plastic uh, pipes. It is used also as an insulator, and it's used to make floor tiles and credit cards. It's very strong and durable. And then we have polythene, poly, polyethylphenylethene, the monomer, which forms polyphenylethene, which is the same as polystyrene. The common name is polystyrene, and you find this especially in your exams a lot. So the only thing that you're changing is the double board is being uh, removed, so you, could, you repeat the same unit again and again. So it's usually light and a poor conductor of heat, so it is used in packaging materials. So it's all that is used to make pa packaging materials. We have tetrafluoroethene. You can see the tetra because it has four fluoride atoms attached to the molecule of uh, ethene. Ethene. So when you remove the double board, it forms tetra fluoroethene which is also known as teflon so you see these common names even placed in the exam so you need to remember them so tetrafluoroethene is referred to as teflon it's non-stick it's usually used to make the non-stick pants it's a very common one and then we have methyl methacrylate this is also very commonly tested in the exam so you can see the structure of methyl methacrylate you can see this is the methyl and then this forms the the main uh, the parent name so this is the methacrylate and then when you combine it with so many you get poly methyl methacrylate. You can see the double board on the oxygen is not changed. The only double board we change is the one that is between the carbon atoms and that is where the attachment occurs. So you can repeat the same process with another monomer and 
it forms now the polymer. So this goes on and on and on and on and on and on like that, on and on and on and on to form now the papex. So it is used in op making of uh, transparent doors, windows, and also dental fillings. Um, and it's also used to make those dental glasses. So that brings us to the end of this polymers. We have seen the different types of additional polymers. Any can come in the exam, so make sure you're able to remember each and every one of them, and at least there are uses. There are not so many to remember, and their uses are very commonly used like in our daily lives. So see you in the next lesson.